Hello, and thank you for coming to America Patriot News. Right next to me is Romeo, and I am Matt, and we have Dr. Rick Chai here. He is from Ohio. He's running for a congressional seat in District 6, I believe, and uh, he he's America First Patriot, and we're ha glad to have him on for an interview to uh, talk to him and try to help him uh, get his message out. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. Welcome to uh, the show, Dr. Chai. Um, you've been a chiropractor for how long in East Palestine? So uh, I live in East Palestine, East Palestine. And I, everybody's got me saying it. So uh, <laughs> if you come into this town and call it East Palestine, uh, they'll correct you. Um, so I've been a, a resident of East Palestine for 30 years now. I grew up just outside of town. It, the uh, A lot of people don't realize that the train wrecked about 300 yards from the Pennsylvania line. So um, my actual office is right across the line in a town called Darlington. That's the next town over in Pennsylvania. That one we can get into later, uh, that it was hit the hardest with the plume, with the fallout from the actual, I call it the chemical bomb, uh, but they call it the, the uh, controlled burn. There wasn't really much control about it. But I've been a uh, resident here for 30 years in East Palestine, and my office uh, is uh, 30 years in uh, Darlington, Pennsylvania. So kind of hit, those two towns were hit with the chemicals in different ways, and we can talk about that uh, later. Okay. Yeah, cool. um, I've watched some of your YouTubes. I just wanted to bring this up, and it's crazy because I grew up playing in creeks, catching salamanders and crawfish, and it's like there's oil floating on the top of the water. You can see it plain as day that the chemicals are still there. Yes, oil's the least of it. Um, there were hundreds of thousands of gallons of chemicals spilled here. There were five tankers of vinyl chloride, 35,000 gallons each. There was uh, two tankers of uh, uh, lube oil and benzene, uh, 35,000 gallons each. Uh, there were other chemicals. There was butyl acrylate, butyl acrylate uh, used in, uh, making uh, paints for homes. Uh, my buddy who works at the uh, Sherwin Williams plant says that when a butyl acrylate truck pulls in, uh, the tanker pulls in and there's almost like a submarine hatch on it. A, a hose comes down and as the butyl acrylate comes out into the uh, storage facility, into the factory, the air is vented out that tube and back in. No no little minuscule bit of butyl acrylate can come into that factory or they'll evacuate everybody. And that's uh, one of the uh, tankers. Uh, actually, I don't remember how many tankers were, were full of that. Um, there were thousands of gallons of that in our waterways and on our land. Um, also, an unidentified amount of ethylene glycol. Uh, we've mm -hmm. never got a, an actual uh, number on that because they called it ethylene glycol residue. So when you have a 35,000 gallon tanker, does that eth eth residue mean five gallons or does it mean 5,000 gallons? And there were also uh, um, other chemicals as well. So yeah, so okay. it's still visible today. I, on Thursday, before the president came into town, uh, I took the media down into the park two miles south of the crash site. And um, I took uh, dirt from the bank and I'm shoveling dirt from the bank and chemicals are just spewing out. If we, I don't know how long your podcast is, but I think the world really needs to know about the lies and corruption and the deceit, not only from the EPA, but the CDC about the, uh, their guidelines on how they discourage doctors from doing tests on people. And one of the largest in the worst, uh, chemical spill from a train derailment in U S history. Um, we need to get into some, uh, things about, uh, what happened here. So people really know, and they don't see it on mainstream media. Well, before we do that, I'd like to talk about your campaign a little bit and uh, start off. Uh, well, obviously East Palestine is in your uh, district, but uh, what else is in your district and uh, what platform are you running on? Is America first well, with Donald Trump? And I know one of the people that actually endorsed you is one of my favorite uh, music artists is a, uh, uh, Ted Nugent, and I'm real excited that he he endorsed you. He uh, he's great, and I'd like yeah. to know more about you as uh, a uh, as a politician. 
So oh, oh, first of all, I'm a 10 week veteran of politics. Uh, I know who I like and I know who I vote for. Um, but I, you know, I told the politicians in, in the debates that we have and every debate that we've done or meet and greet, which actually turns into debates. Uh, I've won every one handily, I believe. Um, I don't have quite the funding they have, but um, so not being a politician, I'm a non-politician that believes uh, I would imagine everything that you guys believe. America first. I'm the only true, I believe, uh, truly America, uh, MAGA, the Make America Great Again candidate. I've done very well in life. That's why I also owe this uh, community and the things that I've done over. I'd like to talk about that, how we how I fought so hard here and my wife as well. But I've done I've done really well in life. I probably could have retired five years ago, uh, but I, I love what I do. Uh, so I continue to do that. But the reason I mention that is because I do not need a penny from anybody. I am so angry about what happened here. Uh, being 30 years a doctor, uh, my uh, one of my really be uh, good friends is an emergency room physician. He was my college roommate. That's the only doctor I hang around. Uh, I fish. I, I, you know, we shoot with what you would call common people. I don't hang around uh, uppity you know, uh, doctors, and I'm not going to hang around politicians in all, you know, it, when I get to Washington, I'm going to do a job and get what uh, needs done, but I don't need money. And I certainly don't need friends. My best friend is my wife. And people will say that. And they just, they just, uh, they say that because it sounds good. I'm really a homebody. You know, I've read a high vault. I, I was able to build in my thirties, one of the largest chiropractic offices in the entire nation. People would come from, uh, not only, uh, uh, across the country to fly in and see how I did it and what I'm doing. Uh, but they would come from Europe as well. And uh, they would walk through my office a day or two. They'd stay over at my house. And my big thing was in business, uh, when you want repeat customers, you do not fleece them. You give them good quality work at a fair price and they'll come to you forever. You fleece people and they'll quit you and you'll always be looking for new customers. Um, I know how to run a business. I believe I know how to communicate. I can get things done. And um, I believe I am the best candidate and the only true candidate that wants nothing other than to, to fix spineless D.C. You know, um, my other two candidates, the other two candidates, they're jumping seats. Uh, one has no option because his term is up as a state senator. So um, I really believe he's jumping a seat so that he can get the uh, congressional seat. Um, the other one, you know, he has a decent voting record, but I. I believe my opponents are weak. When I when I uh, do the meet and greets or debates, um, I, I think people will see that. If they use their gut and they use their instinct, they're going to see who the candidate is that really cares about people, who is doing this not to jump a seat but or, or gain something. It is because I am telling you guys, East Palestine, the corruption that is here, and I'm telling you, I called out the mayor too. Uh, because he did nothing to help the displaced or sick uh, people that got taken advantage of by the railroad and the government. He has stayed silent through this whole thing because, oh boy, uh, do you know if this was, if an entity came into your town and blew up your town and spilled thousands of, hundreds of thousands of gallons of deadly chemicals in your land, and the government came in and they started doing the cleanup, probably 100% of those people in that town would be so angry at that entity that spilled those chemicals. However, what was done here, the government allowed the entity that spilled these chemicals uh, to do the cleanup. And not only have they abused people, they were like the Gestapo here. I mean, they, their contractors would uh, abuse uh, people. Now, a lot of them were okay, but the video we have of people being threatened of being uh, bodily harm and so on, uh, just, you know, uh, the workers, the, the way they treated people. But if if the entity that was the cause of this is doing the cleanup, and so they are so smart, they've got a, a think tank. They have offered things like a $25 million park in a town of 4,000. I don't even know if San, San Francisco or New York gets things like that. They have bought tickets to the carnival, so it was all free this year. Um, they have promised jobs and hotels and training centers in our little town. So you've got half the town uh, fighting. They're saying, so what if you're sick or you, you're faking it? You know, shut up. Norfolk Southern's not going to get us this uh, hotel or this new shopping center or whatever it might be. 
And half the town is saying, well, we're kicked out of our contaminated home. We've been living in a hotel for a year. There's chemicals in our land. There's chemicals in our creek. There are people that got divorced over this. There are uh, friends no longer, no longer talking to friends. It has fractured the whole community. So they're good at what they do. They've got a good PR. If you watch the national news, you probably think everything's, everything is fine here. Uh, there are chemicals everywhere in our waterways, and you would think that they're pristine. So I know I'm just spouting off, but this is all, a lot of these Palestinian residents, this is just, it's, it's a pressure cooker of what's gone on over this entire year. But what I was trying to say, that is a microcosm of what the hell is going on in our nation today. The corruption, the lies, the deceit. And the only reason I'm running is to fight as hard as I can. And let me say this. I said this to the Epic Times uh, yesterday. I said, I don't care if you cut this up. If for some reason people don't like me, I'll stick with my original plan. I was going to you know, retire in a few years and just go bass fishing. That's what I love to do. I said to them, I said, uh, Here's the thing. I'm trying as hard as hell to win this race, and I believe I'm going to win. Uh, I go to places that I wouldn't even think they know me, and they know me because um, I don't have the money. Uh, I have money, but I'm not going to blow all my retirement on, on a campaign that I may not win. And that's called business sense, too. People are saying, why don't you spend you know, $1.5 million? Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to win this. If that's what it takes to win these days uh, from a grassroots campaign, then you know, that's a sad uh, commentary on, on our politics. But I said to them, I said, uh, I'm going to fight like hell to win. But if I do not win, in a way, I'll be relieved. Now, they, somebody could take a soundbite and, 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 and take that away and say, oh, he's going to be relieved if he doesn't win. Here's what I mean by that. If there is a war going on and you believe in that war and you're going to go fight in that war and, and you sign up or you're drafted, you are making a commitment for your core beliefs that you're going to go and you are going to fight like hell and you're going to risk your life. But if you're going to about to go ship out and that war ends before you ship out, you're going to be a little relieved because you know the consequences and what you're going to do uh, and, and what may happen to you or, or, or whatever. I know that if I win, I'm like the Terminator. I don't stop. I know what my life's going to be. I know how I'm going to fight. So that's just it. That there's a difference between my opponents and myself. I do not, tr I really don't want to do this, but I need to do it because of what I see, what has happened here. And that is a reflection of what is going on in our entire nation. And we need to fill our, our uh, country, our uh, government with people like me and not two and three at a time because we need a majority of us. We need to put, put a bunch of seats yeah. with people like me and then we can make real change. Guys who don't need to make their entire fortune in DC. That's what's happening. You're a self-made man. You could retire and you're doing this because you love your community and you love America. And guys that and really probably don't even want to do it, but they have to do it. Yeah. Uh, I was going to tell you that uh, I used to work in the oil field and I saw some of the camera footage you had of the, uh, the it looked like oil are the chemicals coming up? And whenever I was in the oil field, if we had a creek near a uh, pad we were at, and it had that kind of pollution in it from us, from the oil, we'd be fine. We would actually be thrown off location and get fined millions of dollars by APA. And when I see something like that, my question is, what's happened to, uh, to the train company and are they getting fined every day for this? Or, or is the APEA even looking at it? Are they ignoring it? Matt, it, it would take hours. First of all, um, so I voted for Governor DeWine twice. He has been the biggest disappointment. Um, he came into town and he was, you can see this on YouTube and some social media. <clears throat> he came in town to dedicate, and let me back up a little bit. These politicians have used us. I call it like wearing a cheap necklace around their neck. They have used it, us for photo ops. I am, I am so angry, and so are a lot of people in East Palestine. Uh, they would come in undercover. They would, they, nobody would know they were here. <clears throat> so uh, he came into town, and uh, he was dedicating a health clinic to study and help us um, you know, it's long term. See what the long term effects were. And that's my problem with uh, what Biden did uh, when he came into town on on uh, Friday. 
we got nothing. We've never got a cent or bottle of water from them for the federal government. And what he's done, he's given, he wants to give five grants to universities and uh, scientists to study us, the long-term effects on us. If you cannot remove the damn poison, you remove the people from the poison. You do not study us like lab rats yeah. as time goes by. But when he came in, I got a business owner in Pittsburgh. He owns one of the biggest cleaning businesses in Pittsburgh. And somehow he heard the governor was coming in town on a Monday morning. I was really tired that morning doing all kind of stuff. And I said, I'm going to take today off. But he calls me and he says, hey, Rick, your governor's in town. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, I just heard that he's going to be in your town in about 10 minutes dedicating a, a health facility they're putting up. I said, oh, damn. I threw my flannel on, jumped out of bed, threw a ball cap on. And I went down to the his press conference, which was all press. No residents knew he was there. Um, and how we found it was we're just looking around. This is a small town. So you look for the news cars. And so um, he's up there with uh, Ann Vogel of the EPA, of the Ohio EPA. But Ann Vogel, some at the moment while he was talking on the podium, uh, she was inside looking at the health clinic. So he's bragging about the, the great job and how everything's being cleaned up. Meanwhile, the day before, you can see on the video, I'm just showing all these chemicals and oil and, and whatever you got in the creeks. And so I raised my hand and I asked him, I said, uh, it's, it, you know, it's nice that you're dedicating this health facility, but it's also very scary that we even need it. And I said, but what are you doing right now about the biggest cause still people getting sick? That's our creeks that run right through town. And uh, he starts talking about, he said, well, let me, let me get Ann Vogel. And he couldn't find her, which was pretty embarrassing. And I said, a typical EPA. And he sticks his finger out at me and he says, uh, whatever he said, uh, that's not fair. And so I interrupted him. I said, listen to this now. You asked me about the EPA. <clears throat> I said, the, the Ohio EPA, initially, I don't think they're bragging about it as much now, but they kept saying how great they were because they were two, here two hours after the derailment and they were Johnny on the spot. And I said to him, I said, if they were here two hours after the derailment, that's not something to be proud of because per their initial report, it said they observed Norfolk Southern laying tracks over contaminated liquid and soil. And they ran their trains over that soil for months. They never did any cleanup initially. So, um, and the, the, it's still contaminated at the crash site. Uh, the entity that was supposed to protect us, the EPA, allowed a corporation to poison us further by putting tracks over soil they never even cleaned. And that is pretty much how it's gone here the entire time. Uh, other examples are, uh, I, you know, I'll hit the big ones because there's thousands of things that happened that were just so wrong here. The CDC, I don't know if you guys know this, but when the CDC did a uh, door to door knocking, seeing how people uh, were, uh, how they were feeling and dealing with the symptoms, uh, their workers got sick. I don't know if you know that because it was hidden. And then a wow. uh, whistleblower said that they got sick. And then the CDC said, well, the reason we didn't report that was because they felt fine when they left. They were staying 30 miles out of town. Uh, that's where they would stay. They wouldn't stay in East Palestine. And so that was their excuse uh, for not reporting it. Um, so the CDC was also uh, the entity I said before that uh, uh, recommended that doctors not test because we were all here crazy in East Palestine and maybe all, you know, we're faking our symptoms when their own workers got sick. But when I, against, I went against the CDC guidelines, and I routinely tested people here, blood and blood work and urine. Uh, they came up high for benzene in their in their bodies. And you don't walk around with benzene in your bodies. No, no. You know what they would say? Well, maybe they pumped gas and spilled gas on them that day. Can you freaking believe that? So secondly, um, when I would test for what's called thiodiglycolic acid, um, when you inhale, you get uh, vinyl chloride on you. <clears throat> one of the metabolites, it, it breaks down into one of the metabolites into thiodiglycolic acid. And they said, well, that test is a little um, uh, inaccurate because they could have chopped up five pounds of onions that day, which could also, and maybe vitamin B12 if they took it. Uh, well, a lot of these people were surveyed and they did none of that. But if you look at in Asia, uh, there were children in an elementary school at a petrol plant coming up with uh, liver problems, uh, diseases. They used that vinyl chloride metabolite as a criteria to see whether they the kids were being exposed to vinyl chloride that test was good enough to move those little kids in asia 
away from the elementary school and move them to an entirely different town. The sad fact is that is not good for the people, uh, good enough for the people of East Palestine, United States of America. It is so corrupt here. Every, I, I could give you a hundred more examples of how the EPA and the CDC have lied here. Uh, most people, uh, many people, uh, let me put it that way, have uh, credited me for the EPA having to extend their, extend their map of contamination. Uh, whatever genius built this town back in the day, uh, they did not put our homes and businesses on the banks of the creeks. They built concrete culverts and the creek runs through it. And then the businesses and homes are built upon those uh, culverts. Uh, those are decades old. There's faults and cracks in the culverts. Uh, people's storm drains go into those. The water comes out, but the chemicals also off gas into the yards and into the homes. Um, when the EPA was telling us that culverts are great, you know, we, we tested the air quality. There's a, a culvert here that's two football fields long. Nobody ever went into that culvert. It's pitch black. It's almost like you were in the movie Aliens. So I put my uh, military gear on and went in there. Keep in mind, as they're telling us that it's safe, they determined that by sending a $70,000 Boston Dynamics robot dog in, mm. and their EPA workers will not go in that tunnel. So when I went in that tunnel, I'm filming chemicals everywhere. Uh, it's, it's on video. I don't have CGI to make this stuff up. Um, it's, it's disgusting. So, so how many people are, are sick? in the town right now how many people are sick so because it's so fractured here people two reasons now people aren't speaking out if you speak out you're attacked three weeks into this i was very positive in the beginning i don't know how the media heard it, heard about us but i'm assuming somebody said hey talk to dr chai i was on a, 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 a newsmax on a show with called greg kelly my wife and I are on there and you can hear uh, they're saying, Greg's asking, how are you guys doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm good. This was maybe two weeks after the crash. Um, and then I started going into the creeks because the EPA was saying everything's good. I went down to the creeks because my wife was so upset. First time ever I've been in the creeks, chemicals coming up everywhere. I'm, I'm lifting up rocks. I'm moving things. I come back and I say, we are fucked. And then from then for the last year, I have been in those creeks either daily, multiple times a week, or when I would get ill, there would be a three or four week period of time where I wouldn't do anything. Um, so, uh, I, so wait, wait, repeated exposure makes this worse. It does. It does. So, so what happens is when it rains here or there's a fog, it smells like an open can of paint and maybe as if you... Uh, a fuse blew or like a, something overloaded in your house on a plug and there's a like a burnt smell to it the mica yeah yeah people cannot speak out because they're attacked oh but what i was saying three weeks into this i'm, I'm starting to post uh videos on youtube and i'm like look at these chemicals in the creeks people half the people were shocked and we want to get out of here half the people were shut up norfolk you're going to make norfolk southern mad we won't get our park can you believe that let me let me add something too before, um, because I might forget. Uh, there are injection wells that they're putting the contaminated water in. Coshocton, Ohio, which is east of us, just now refused to take any more. Uh, they drill these wells that are uh, two miles deep, and they put that contaminated water into the wells. Nobody's taking it. Um, so Norfolk Southern has built a makeshift. Um, water treatment plant here, and they're going to re release that into our creeks. People were furious. They attended a town hall, and the the head of the water department here, I believe it was, I believe that's who it was, um, he said, he said, listen, you're going to save on your water bill. This is the mentality of these people. They're putting health above, I just, it's a twilight zone here. I don't know how else to say it. It's yeah, disregard sure. people's health over profit and promise a future gain yeah i'm a uh, capitalist as much as anyone else but if it's gonna hurt someone then i'm not gonna do it yeah and matt and romeo i am a capitalist true and true okay so and i treat for years i've treated hundreds of patients that work for norfolk southern i actually have at this point i really don't have anything against norfolk southern whoever made that decision 
when they when they came here and they saw all those chemicals spilled and they decided to put tracks and run those right over and contaminate us further. Um, I don't know if that's Alan Shaw or who pulls the strings, but that person's got to go. And we need trains. I still people. There's a lot of women, especially that are so have so much PTSD when the train whistles blow. They tell me they mm-hmm. they they get anxiety. I do not. I mean, I I love I still love trains. Uh, commerce has to move, but you've got to draw the line when something like that happens and you assess what happened and uh, you have to make some different decisions about that. We're yeah, just and you can damage. clean it up. You could you could literally spend a little bit of money and remove you know three foot of the creek bed and you could you could make an attempt to fix this and it doesn't sound like that's being done so that's really that's disheartening the the thing the thing is the longer they wait the deeper it goes in and more dirt you have to move and that's what that's what's messed up about it if they would have fixed it the first two weeks they wouldn't be in this situation so Romeo, and you're both hitting really good points. And Matt, so Romeo, um, uh, you said them about them dredging the creeks. I kept saying initially, and everybody kept saying here, "Hey, get the Army Corps of Engineers here. Let's." Dr-. There was a spill years ago, uh, maybe 20 miles from here, where they did just that. They wouldn't do it here. I, I don't know why, um, but um, they said. The, here's what the EPA said. The reason I'm hesitating, it, it's mind boggling how stupid they think we are. So um, they said, you know, they killed over 40,000, 43,000 fish, animals, uh, whatever walked, swam or crawled in that creek was dead when they sent the vinyl chloride through there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, 250 miles south in the, on the Ohio River, shut off its water intakes for the city. Uh, it was it was the plume of of uh, chemicals was seen as far as Wheeling, West Virginia, in the Ohio River. So there were hundreds of thousands of gallons that went through our creeks. Um, they said, "Here's what they said: We don't want to dredge your creeks because as life starts coming back, uh, we're going to kill it again." And they, it even killed the bacteria. The whole ecosystem of the creek was killed. I've always contended mm-hmm. if 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 your if the ecosystem of our creeks can come back from your deadly chemicals, they can surely come back from your your uh, back hose. Uh, yes. I think we're idiots. So also, uh, Matt, you said about it going deeper. There was a second fish kill here, which uh, you know the, the when when they knocked down a bridge. I won't go into all of it because this could take hours. Uh, we had a grant to uh, the city had a grant to replace the little bridge that goes for the the entrance of our East Palestine park. And if they didn't get it done or start it before 2024, I guess they lost the grant. So I was there a couple of days before it was torn down and I was underneath with my staff and I'm saying, man, when they tear this bridge down, uh, they're going to release so many chemicals because there's so many chemicals in the mud under this bridge. And when they tore it down, all the fish were killed. There were chemicals everywhere. Okay. Uh, the buddy that was with me, I said, Hey, don't release this yet because every time we'd release something, the EPA would spin it. I said, let's investigate a few days here. But he released that night, that video that night. The next day, the EPA, ODNR, uh, Ohio Department of Natural Resources was here. I should have grabbed more fish. I grabbed some and put them in a jar. They're in my freezer still. Um, Every single fish was dead, uh, was gone when we returned. Uh, Every bit of dead life, crayfish, they all, they all took them away. But the EPA said, well, um, we did not smell any chemicals, so we didn't test the creeks. Um, so I was so angry. That was their quote in our, our local paper here. That's I went no to work at all. Well, I, I bought that. Well, first of all, is there a smell test for the EPA? Does that determine whether right. you test for chemicals or not? So I took the, uh, uh, the paper to work and I read it. I couldn't wait to get off work. I immediately went to the creek after work about six o'clock. So I filmed with paper in hand as I'm walking through just chemicals everywhere around my feet. Uh, but again, so when that they did that that bridge to get back to your point, Matt, about it going deeper, we were given almost a, a, a gift, a geological study, because they took one bucket full, a, a steam shovel, a, a backhoe bucket. About uh, depression was about five feet deep, about five feet wide and ten feet in length, and. Um, That was some of the worst contamination that we saw in months because when they dug deeper, uh, there's videos of me hitting lower in the soil and the chemicals coming out deep. 
And a large portion of us are on wells. And that is why we're so concerned. We're not in a closed loop system. Uh, and there are mines under here where the waters flow different ways. Yep. Uh, so uh, that's why we were trying to move in October. We're, we're actually moving out of here in May. We're in a beautiful secluded part of the woods just on the fringe of town. We never planned on leaving here. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a reckoning if I win. Not if, but when I win. Good, Good. deal. It needs yeah. to happen. Absolutely. And I know we came to talk about my campaign as well and my policies, but the world is not hearing this part of it. There are still so many people getting sick. There is a woman down at the crash site that I interviewed early on. Her name's Lonnie. Her entire family got so sick. They, they're, they're out of town. They're 15 miles out of town. But they had their home paid off. Modest home. People aren't wealthy here. And that's what breaks my heart. They had no mortgage payment. That was their forever home. They've been there forever. Uh, they raised their son there. Uh, they moved now 15 miles out of town with a, a fixer upper uh, that they now have a $1,500 mortgage payment and they're oh, having man. trouble struggling. Uh, but their current home, their realtor says in my entire career, I've never had a home sit for over 100 days that hasn't got one hit, not one inquiry. So that is what we're dealing with here. Uh, it's, it's criminal. And the market's dead, huh? You can't sell a house there. There are people, you know, there's some home selling. Some are renting out. People may see deals here and they're renting, you know, they're, hey, let's get some homes and rent them out, you know, uh, maybe. And there's also LLCs buying stuff here. Norfolk Southern's bought a lot of property here. So that's to be determined. Uh, uh, they bought a lot of property uh, with their, uh, uh, that's a whole nother thing. They want to now thank our town by building a training facility here. This is a quaint little town. I loved it here. Uh, there's going to be up to 5,000 migrant work. When I say migrant, I mean people from all over the United States. And we, there's good and bad people everywhere. This is a small little town. We don't know who these 5,000 people are going to be coming into our town training. And hopefully they're good people. But, you know, they're talking about hotels. And um, I love the people here. I love what this town was. But unfortunately, I'm out. So we're going to get we're moving out in May. So uh, some of the chemicals that uh, you were talking about earlier, they're used to make plastic, aren't they? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, so vinyl chloride. Uh, vinyl chloride, that's a single molecule. Those are monomers. Uh, yeah. When you start linking them together, they become, you know, it's a polymer then, and then it becomes vinyl chloride, uh, PVC. So if you look at the NTSB, uh, over eight hours of two days, 16 hours of hearings here, uh, they knew those tankers were not going to blow up. Uh, so they kept saying, well, we're worried about, this is Norfolk Southern. We're worried about uh, the, the, the monomers, the, uh, the vinyl chloride monomers getting heating up and they're sticking together and then they're going to turn to PVC and they're going to muck up the release valves. Pressure is going to build, tanks are, tankers are going to blow. Uh, the owner of that company, uh, OxyVinyls, that's uh, transporting the, uh, the uh, vinyl chloride and they own the tankers, they were monitoring those temperatures the entire time. They told Norfolk Southern they were not going to blow. There was no chance of polymerization. The shrapnel uh, from those tankers, there is not, there's not been one shred of uh, the vinyl uh, PVC or polymerization found. Uh, when asked by the NTSB uh, here in the NTSB hearing, the person that was relaying the information, the person uh, that works for Norfolk Southern, that was relaying the, because these people from OxyVinyls were on the phone elsewhere uh, in the country uh, monitoring the temperatures of their tankers. When asked, uh, hey, did you relay that, that information to uh, the, you know, uh, the command, uh, Command Central? And he said, you know, in the heat of the moment, I forgot, but I'll do better next time. Um, so that is Norfolk Southern employee uh, telling him that he forgot to tell uh, the uh, you know the governor the and they said don't you think that would have been important information to tell them and he said well you're talking right before they lit it all on fire right yeah yeah, yeah. so also the the problem with that is the, to do that properly to drill into the tankers and drain it the at the NTSB hearing said that that would have taken five at least five days keep in mind you already had trains backed up for miles. And it would it, take it take a day just to blow them up and move them off the tracks and put tracks down. So we I believe they did it. And again, you know, I'm I'm a capitalist, but you draw the line when you uh, hurt people and you hurt people's yeah. health. You just got to deal with it. OK, something happened. Let's do it right. 
Um, yeah, so um, the temperature was going down, not going up. Uh, they said, we're afraid it's going to go over 180 degrees. Uh, it was already over 150 the day before and nothing happened. So they decided to blow it up at, I believe, 140 degrees. Remember, it already reached 150 the day before. And there were some delays of them hooking up the explosives. But, so by the time the three-hour gap, the, the temperature, if you look, it went down to 122 degrees. Yep. It wasn't going to blow. And I believe they knew that. Well, that really matters because the bottom line is you could have looked at the whole scenario different. It would have been like, no, let's try and write these these train cars. Let's not have a big fire that spreads chemicals throughout the whole state. Yeah, I, I worked construction before, and I also worked in the, the oil field. And if it was me, I saw the train cars. Those would have fit on big trucks. I would have had big trucks come in and use a crane to set those cars on there, make sure it's all plugged up, and get them out of there. That would have been the thing that would have made the most sense to me. And get them to somewhere yeah. where you could actually unload them. And I look at what they did. They did it the lazy way, and they did uh, they took shortcuts for profit. And uh, and the thing is, the Biden administration and, and, uh, and the government itself allowed them to do it because they're bought out by these people, by the train company and by, uh, and by the chemical companies that, that allowed it to happen. Oh, so one more thing about that and any other topic you guys want to talk about. Um, so the town was, was horrified because, so you, you cannot run trains through a town that is under an evacuation. Okay. So it's, it's not lawful nobody had any idea this was going to happen. All of us are glued to the latest press conference. You know, we're all evacuated. Uh, people are staying out of town uh, while they do this burn. And then we were hoping it was going to test safe to come back home. Well, when they, three days after they said, okay, it, it's safe. Well, it wasn't safe, but as we're packing up to come home, we're already getting phone calls. Oh my God. They just lifted the evacuation order to come back home. And not seven minutes later, I believe it was, trains are barreling through the town on that contaminated soil, oh, wow. uh, pulling uh, powdery uh, powder, all that. They didn't do any cleanup. They just barreled us in. Uh, trains run through, I'm going to guess, I, I could be wrong. I've been here 30 years. I think trains run through here uh, maybe every half hour, 20 minutes or so. Keep in mind, these trains were backed up for days. I've never seen so many trains, probably every four to five minutes, trains were just barreling through, carrying those chemicals into other counties and other states and pounding that right into our ground. So uh, there was a there was a, a big uh, contra you know, every, all the townspeople were just shocked. It, it was like we were being they were being raped, basically. Yeah, so. um, this is this is definitely a nightmare. And I. We have to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about your yeah. campaign because yeah. we so we support you. We need guys like you in Congress who don't need to be there to make their riches, but are there because they love America. So tell us about the campaign and where you're at, how you're doing. So campaign couldn't be doing any better as a as a grassroots campaign. Uh, when patients ask me or anybody asks me, hey, Rick, how's the campaign going? I say, it couldn't be going any better except for the $2 million, I think that I was been told by consultants that the uh, other guy uh, being endorsed by the Republican Party uh, has spent. Um, the other guy, I believe, uh, a couple months ago, released he was up $300,000. Uh, we are not near that. But I will tell you, uh, I don't think anybody's knocked on any more doors than me, uh, businesses. Uh, I have some really unique things that I'm doing that help build my practice. Um, it, I don't want to talk. I haven't talked about those because, and I think it's too late for them to try to do that anyway, but I think it's going really well. Uh, every time I go to a talk, I get those butterflies in my stomach and say, Oh God, like five people are going to show up. I went, I spoke at the, uh, my, uh, Mahoning uh, Valley. That's the Youngstown, uh, um, uh, Republican uh, headquarters, uh, last Saturday just like all my talks, standing room only. You can't fit more people in. People are so excited. Uh, I go, <laughs> so I'll reveal one thing. I try to go, along with door knocking, I try to go where people don't even think of going. 
Uh, I go to really packed flea markets and give things out and uh, uh, fish and game shows, gun shows, uh, where I can see a, a massive amount of people in a short period of time. And I go to these out of town and people are fist bumping me. Hey, I've seen you on the national news. We follow you. We've been following you forever. You're the Creek Ranger uh, from the, the Creek videos that I've made the last year. Uh, it's it's they're so excited. And I I believe I'm going to win. Maybe I'm naive because. Uh, you know, they, they predict or, or whoever predicts these things say, you know, somebody like me can't win. I'm going to prove them wrong. So it's going really well for what we, for what we're doing. It's going very, very well. Who's the incumbent? Is it a Democrat or Republican? There, there is no incumbent. Uh, Bill, okay, okay. Guy named Bill Johnson, he was a congressional rep that uh, just out of the blue vacated his seat to take the presidency at uh, Youngstown State University. Yeah. And so right now we don't have. Uh, actually, uh, I believe he—he's either vacated or he vacates in June. Uh, so uh, the the there's a uh, grocery store, the son of a grocery store owner, uh, an Italian grocery store. His name is Michael Ruley, and then there's somebody from a, a, a small district. That's a state senator. Uh, the other guy is a state rep. Uh, his name is uh, Reggie Stoltzfutz. And uh, so that's uh, the two I'm going against. The uh, the grocery son of the grocery store owner is the one that the Republican, you know, they're mainly backing. Uh, nobody's got a Trump uh, uh, endorsement. endorsement at this point. Actually, there's not a lot of endorsements. I, I don't know if they're just seeing how it plays out. Uh, I understand you got to, this is the way I think about it. I'm not asking for anything. You got to cut the wood first before you get the heat. Uh, I would tell you that if I had more backing or was more of a sure winner, that I, I believe I would have been endorsed by everybody already. Because uh, the biggest thing I hear is that at these debates, people come up to me and I, almost, I, I get standing ovations. And people, well, some of the debates you're not allowed to do that, but they come up and they say, "We need people like you. You're a non-politician. You ask, you answer something right when we ask you." Uh, I don't spin it for five minutes. And uh, I think that's what people want. And I think that's yeah. what America needs right now. I think that if I if it was a longer campaign and a little bit more funding, I would have had many, many more endorsements. Um, but, you know, maybe possible people aren't willing to back somebody they're not sure about. But I'm the best candidate for the job. When is the election? The election is uh, March 19th. So that is, uh, you're talking just, just less than a month. Early voting started yesterday, actually. Well, yeah. you know, I I hate to yeah. hear that some grocery store heir with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars has got the edge. And you know what? I, I think what you're saying is right. No, people want real. They want someone who won't bullshit them, who will give them a straight answer the first time that they ask. And so... You might be surprised. You might pull out a victory here. I sure hope so. Yeah. So um, I go into his area, into Youngstown, and um, so I'm I'm getting pretty well known there. So that's always a good sign. I'm surprised. I said, "Wow, you guys know me up here." You know the the public, and they say, "Yeah." So uh, we will see. Uh, he is also uh, there was a there was a sham charity done here. Uh, $130,000 was stolen from uh, some you know, people who set up all kind of charities here. Uh, and the guy uh, ended up uh, walking with the money and taking it. Well, he oh. was caught. That ended up being his leg legislative advisor who worked right next to him in his office. And I just learned that we knew about the, the actual um, the scam, but we didn't know who it was. I went uh, serendipitously. I went to the policeman's dinner the night before the, the one debate. And uh, the police said, yeah, that's uh, your opponent's uh, legislative advisor. He took the money and we still don't know why he's not in jail. So, uh, you know, and, and both of my politics, my opponents came down here, did not do a damn thing in East Palestine, but they're, they're, they're parading around here. One even came down during the uh, president, uh, you know, when on Friday, cause it was like a Trump rally here. Uh, so, you know, he's parading around as if he's done something here. If it was good enough for you to come for a damn photo op, why didn't you do anything for our town in an entire year that you were here? So anyway, uh, I, I guess we should talk about policies and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what's your policies on, uh, the, uh, the war in Ukraine? 
the war on Ukraine, we we need I I believe we just got to stop. We got to stop funding. Um, we we'll let the chips fall where they may. We're suffering here, and we're suffering also. We're suffering so by not not twofold or tenfold, a hundred or a thousandfold. We're giving so much money away. Look at us, East Palestine. We got nothing. We have nothing. We've gotten not one penny from the federal government. And then, you know, talking about Ukraine, about the money we're blowing there and the money we're losing from the illegal aliens coming into the country. Uh, I'm, I'm close the border and get the illegal aliens out. You know, we're, I think we're, we're old enough uh, to know. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to see, you know, comedy movies and you'd see, you know, they'd yell INS and you knew that, the, you know, the, the people would go running. Um, right, right. They knew that if they were in the country illegally, there's a good chance they were going to get kicked out. They don't know that anymore. In fact, they're entitled to be here. They need to get I've out. I thought that. And listen, listen. So uh, the guy, if you've seen that derailment, the pictures of the derailment, there's a big blue building there. Everybody's seen that. The, 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 uh, the trains wrecked right next to it. The, built, the chemicals went under the, the ground under his building. That's a legal Chinese immigrant, U.S. citizen who opened opened a factory here, brought a lot of jobs here. Uh, he was opening another one to bring more jobs to East Palestine. His his American dream is decimated. Those factories are closed. His workers got sick when they came back, ended up in the hospital. Well, um, so I was I got his endorsement. In fact, one of my opponents came down and got the mayor's endorsement because the mayor uh, he's never done anything to help people here. Uh, he's sided with Norfolk Southern. Uh, and so that's a whole nother story. But the people that were hurt or the businesses that were hurt all endorsed me. Well, somebody on Facebook, once I uh, released that endorsement, they said, you're a racist. You're taking a, a uh, an endorsement from a Chinese man and you're saying illegals out and you're picking on uh, Mexicans and his Hispanics. And I said, you're who's the racist here? I never once said Hispanics. I say illegal aliens. There are thousands of Chinese crossing this border and we don't know who they are. I don't care if you're Chinese. I don't care if you're Hispanic. I don't care if you're black, you're white, uh, you're Afghani. If you're illegal, I'm going to do everything in my power uh, in Washington. I'll sign everything that can be signed or side with President Trump to get these people out of here. Yeah, it's one of the biggest problems we have facing in the nation today. It'll literally bankrupt us. Social Security, gone. There won't be money for anything if we're going to pay um, the people who wanted to move here to actually come here. And it's just so you know, it's it's between 40 and 50 grand a year they're giving them. So it's no little sum. Romeo, you mentioned uh, Social Security. It is tax fraud. These people are working as independent contractors with 1099s. And honestly, companies, I don't believe they care if they're forged or not. As long as they have that paperwork, they're not responsible to determine if those papers are forged. And I, I believe that they don't care. As long as they have those papers, they're safe, meaning the employer. So they're not paying into Social Security. You know, they're living, and I, I know this from talking to people here that, that go to job sites. You know, some of these people are living 10 to 20 to a room. Uh, they're not pumping back into our economy because they're sending a lot of money back home. Uh, they're not paying into social security, but they're using our medical system as well for free. And they're tying up emergency rooms. I've got, a, a, again, my, my best, one of my best friends is an emergency room physician for 30 years, my college roommate. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible problem. Free health care. You cannot have this many illegals. Uh, our school system, our health care system, Social Security. Uh, who, who? The math doesn't work. That's the point. Does the math work. doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, we need to. I mean, is, is this a fair statement for you? America first. It is. That's the only statement. What, and why should we be ashamed of that now? It's like people are afraid to say that. Do you remember, you know, when we were younger, that was a, you were proud to say that. That's now right. that's racist, it's racist, it's, uh, you know, whatever they're calling it. Uh, we used to be proud to be Americans. Now we have to be ashamed of it. Hey, these are the same people on the news like a year and a half ago 
that were crying about too many American flags in Long Island. So you know what? I don't even pay attention to anything they say anymore. They hate America. So th their opinion doesn't count to me. If there's any topics I could I could tell you what uh, we've got. We're also sitting on one of the... So to prove the D6, I'm not anti-capitalist. Natural gas is just ridiculous. The Green New Deal. We're sitting on what's called the Marcellus Shale. We have over 400 years of energy under our feet, and it needs to be out of the ground now. Until we can come up with something better, that's what we need. Uh, yep. Now, there's one thing that I want to talk about. It's the trade secret rule. It's just, it's in my opinion, it's, it's, it's fake. It, 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 they don't have to release the chemicals that they're pumping into our ground to break up the, uh, you know, to get the gas out of the shale. Uh, many states don't have that trade secret rule, uh, and those chemicals are have to be disclosed. Uh, I want to get gas out of the ground, but I believe Americans should know what's put in their land underneath their wells. So in case they do get hit, we know who's responsible. And uh, one of my policies as well, because a disaster like this can happen in anybody's town, not just from a train derailment, but from a chemical fire, from a plant in your town, or uh, you know even fracking, if it hits people's wells. Uh, in, in, in the medical field, we have something called malpractice insurance. It used to be that if you got into an accident, two cars got into an accident, uh, the people that were injured would have to wait until the insurance company spotted out. And that could take years to see who was responsible before they got paid. So then they came up with something called no fault insurance. Does not mean anybody's at fault, uh, nobody's at fault. What it means is while these insurance companies are, are, are fighting it out, your insurance company pays for your injuries or your, your lost work and their insurance company does the same for them. And then the insurance companies fight it out and they get reimbursed by one of the two later. When a disaster happens like this, I want to write a bill that uh, if we have money enough to go to Ukraine, we can buy these people out. Uh, that, let's say your well is hit by those chemicals. You're not going to sit there for years while you're suing this, this company uh, while you don't know what to do. You're displaced from your home uh, like uh, Lonnie is. And then the government is going to go after that entity that caused it, and they're going to pay up. And you mentioned also, you talked about uh, I, something reminded me, uh, we need to get back to paper ballots, I believe. Uh, yeah. Watermark serialized paper ballots that the counting is televised. And so that's my take on that. Uh, same thing as President Trump says, if, if France can do it in, in 24 hours, uh, we can do the same or better. Because when I uh, when I hear you speak, you sound like someone I would vote for. Someone yes. that's not a politician. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sick and tired of politicians. I'm sick and tired of lawyers. I like to put them on the island and get the hell out of here. But <laughs> but uh, I hope you win, and uh, we'll be praying for you here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we'll be we're gonna. Win. Uh, Ohio is going to win, and I do want to thank you. Uh, I am sincere. the The thing is, at this moment. For these people to see, I talked some about my campaign. I did want to let everybody know that East Palestine is still suffering. I will, you know, this is what I tell people of D6. I'm not a one trick pony. I, I'm going down four hours south to meet uh, with county commissioners. I've been up and down this state talking with uh, uh, sewage departments, uh, water departments that are suffering about things that I have plans for. And I will tell you this I'll end with this. If, uh, if you need help, D6, I can get things done. I will bring that same shovel that I use to expose the EPA and their lies, and I will root out the rats in your county or your town because it is this corruption in your little town that's holding back prosperity in Ohio. And let's fix this. Let's do everything we can to fix Ohio and the nation. So thank you, guys. Well, before we go, uh, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you so they can go and subscribe. And also, any way they can help you with your campaign with donations or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So you can go to rickchai.com. You can also find me on Dr. Rick Chai for Congress on Facebook. It is also Dr. Rick Chai on Twitter. And we could use funds. We've got a fundraiser uh, Saturday. It's it's already, it's there's a lot of people coming and we're probably going to be max capacity um, but you know, uh, this is pulled pork wings and, uh, and brisket. And so it's not $1,300 a plate. We're grassroots. If you can spare anything, no matter how small, go to my campaign page, rickchai.com and you can uh, donate. And we'd really, really appreciate it. Do it for God and country. 
because I'm going to win this and Ohio's going to win this. I'd rather eat that than caviar any day. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed. Please hit that like button, comment, and share this out to everybody. And also look down bottom in the description area. I'll have all of uh, Rick's uh, links down right at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you. Just if you would turn the notifications bell on just so you know when we make new content. We're live at 930 tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful rest of your day.